ask you, you're wearing your Detroit Stars hat that you said was yeah. a, a giveaway. This is pretty, right? much, pretty much my trademark. Anyway. People don't know, don't that's recognize great, me if I don't have it on. That's a great hat. Uh, yeah. So how did you start to get into the Negro League um, you know the, the statistics and the history because I think that your opinion on, on and and like I said that histogra- historiography that you wrote for and I'm, I'll put that up so people can see it later but um, it it just gives so much more credence to that uh, the Negro leagues were major leagues and and I've tried to be to give the context by talking to the authors researchers people who've been involved in this for a long time because you can't take today's game and put it take it a hundred years ago and compare it to what was going on so there, there's just different scenarios uh, so so give us your take on on that um, you know the recent announcement baseball references made right well you touched upon a key thing people have this idea that since 1969, the Macmillan Encyclopedia debut, that baseball history has been so um, well documented. People have this idea that people like Ty Cobb and Nap Lajeway and Pete Alexander and Christy Matthewson and Cap Anson and uh, you know these 19th century players as well, that they know them better than they do. And but Negro Leaguers are somehow in the exotic universe. I mean, mm-hmm. some people, I think, and, and this is not a good attitude, treat Negro Leaguers like they're almost in the zoo. Like, yeah, we know there are these black guys who play baseball, and we know they were good. We really don't know much about them. We're a little bit suspicious. And you can't count them in the same circle as major leaguers. Maybe that's not fair. They were screwed over because of discrimination, mm-hmm. but we don't know what to do with them, so we're not going to make the effort, you know. Mm-hmm. And that tired sort of logical but not consistent thought process um, finally collapsed last year in the era of Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. the 100th anniversary of the Negro National League, and Ben Lindbergh's brilliant piece in the Ringer, which he basically said, "Why not?" He he didn't say. Okay, what's wrong with the Negro? He just said, "Why not? Why aren't they major leagues?" Mm-hmm. And that started the that started the ball rolling and the political and social pressure, because it was the centennial of the Negro leagues and Major League Baseball is committed to celebrating that. Um, and because of Black Lives Matter, I mean, just made it irresistible. And thank God, because mm-hmm. it's finally some justice. Mm-hmm. And and the extra attention the Negro leagues are going to get is going to mean that there's going to be more research and more gaps in the history to fill in. And one of the more silly arguments against the Negro League was, well, we don't know how many home runs Josh Gibson hit. Well, I tell you what, 50 years ago, people didn't know how many home runs a lot of players hit. They just assumed they did because it was printed in a book. Ah, good point. You know, if you read the introduction to my ESPN Baseball Encyclopedia, I this is very long, uh, and you had to have patience to read an essay about all the career hits totals for Cap Anson. Now, Cap Anson is the premier player huh. in the century, one of the greatest Hall of Famers, a famous ball player, for some good reasons and, and one bad one, which is he was one of the mm-hmm. first guys to insist on a color line in baseball. For, mm-hmm. and, and because of his, his stature, he could um, pretty much make sure it happened. Mm-hmm. But you can find, like, I, I can't remember, like six different career hit totals for Cap Anson, and they don't vary by one or two. They might vary by 30. Mm-hmm. And that's because of the research and because of different editorial decisions that people and different baseball encyclopedias made. Mm-hmm. And so if Cap Anson's hit total can change plus or minus 30, and if he could be a member of the 3008 club one year and not the next year, even though he's been dead for, you know, 75, well, then, or probably even more than that, but depending on what you're talking about, then why do we have to get upset that we don't have complete stats for the Negro Leagues? We don't. We're, get, we're getting pretty good, getting pretty good. They're certainly reliable enough to make judgments about these players. And there's no reason to continue to discriminate against them because they were discriminated. All right, exactly. That's, I mean, that's a great point. And, you know, what, when, when were statistics more 
readily available to the general public? Because I know, you know, you see box scores in newspapers and you see things that, you know, sometimes they had, uh, you know, uh, maybe season totals at some point along in there. But when, when did it become uh, actually um, more readily accessible for the everyday fan to actually get historical perspective on, on statistics? Well, I mean, really, that would start with the modern encyclopedias. And the first modern encyclopedia before it was the Barnes Official Encyclopedia of Baseball. And that came out, and I'm, of course, not going to know my history well enough. That came out in the 50s. Okay. And it ran through, I think, eight editions. And Pete Palmer edited the last few editions. Um, that was a good encyclopedia, but nowhere near as complete as what you would expect. The real um, great leap forward was um, the Macmillan Encyclopedia, which first edition in 1969, went through 10 editions, last 10th edition in 1996, before it went out of print. The Macmillan Encyclopedia was the first encyclopedia that was computer typeset. It was the first encyclopedia where the stats were based on a new computer database, and uh, David Neff, uh, was in charge of that project. Pete Palmer helped out uh, along with a lot of other people. And they basically computerized all of the stats in baseball history, added them all up and said, uh-uh, the, <laughs> this team's pitchers gave up 747 runs, but the hitters, you know, the opposing team hitters only scored 743. Something's wrong. And mm -hmm. by doing that, and doing a lot of work, a mm -hmm. lot of work, you were dealing with paper back then, and there mm -hmm. was no personal computer you could take to the library with, with an Excel spreadsheet to help you. You were dealing with paper and you were dealing with mainframes and punch cards. Mm -hmm. um, by doing that, they corrected literally tens of thousands of mistakes. In, wow. Including especially the team stats were a mess. And that was the first modern encyclopedia. And that's the book that any kid could get if mom or dad or grandma would buy you for your birthday. And, it, you know, when I was... Um, <laughs> I think I probably bought my first one was 40 bucks. Uh -huh. By the time it it's, uh, had gone out of print, it was 55 or $60. Mm -hmm. And if, if you were willing to spend that money, you had what we thought was the entirety of baseball history in there. So, but you didn't because Total Baseball came along in the late 80s and Total Baseball had more stats and analytical stats and better stats. And Total Baseball had five to 600 pages of history. Total Baseball was like a double-sized book about baseball history attached to a to a 2000 page encyclopedia it was even better i mean i hope people you know can appreciate what you're saying here this is in our lifetimes that that just happened uh that there was a readily yeah, some accessible of our, some of us can remember that <laughs> but i mean think about that though. Yeah. Yeah. but think about that though right i mean because uh -huh. of the, the advent of computers and everything else right and and it still went through all sorts of massaging and iterations and updating and, and, and everything else. And it took a long time to get it to where it is. The statistics coming out of the Negro Leagues are going to go through that same process, right? Eventually, they should hopefully get to a, a better, uh, you know, more complete product. They're, they're not quite there yet. They will. And they're still being discovered, still having discoveries made. Mm -hmm. However, there remains the likelihood that um, a substantial number of Negro Leagues games were never never had a box score printed in a newspaper. Right. And for those games, unless somebody finds a trunk in somebody's attic with the score book from the 1935 Homestead Grays that fills in six games that we've never seen a box score for, we're probably never going to have um, the stats from those games. Mm -hmm. But life isn't perfect, and the Negro Leagues – both deserve this and baseball fans need this mm -hmm. they do and and i like i said I, I think you pointed that out the timing now has been right in the last year of what's been going on well, last summer with with uh like you mentioned the, the black lives matter it just brought things more to people's attention and now and, and it just coincided with that hundredth year and, and so much was going on that has at least finally given some awareness because you know uh, it's not perfect right now. No. Uh, and there's a lot of people working hard to try to get it as perfect as possible. But is it ever going to be 100%? Probably not, unfortunately. But that right. does not but, discount what they did. 
but the formerly white major league stats that is prior to Jack Robinson's reintegration of baseball, because some people should know there were a small number of black players in 19th century major leagues. Um, the Robinson and the integrated era before that, the stats weren't perfect either. We just, we just assume they are because they're official. The official stats are assumed to be accurate because they're official. They're in fact very accurate, but they're not 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just such a, an alignment of the planets last year. Mm -hmm. I don't think without Ben Lindbergh's article, this would have happened because I really turned up the heat. I don't think without Black Lives Matter, it would have happened. And I don't think without the Negro League Centennial, it would have happened. I think everything had to align to get Major League Baseball to admit that they had made this terrible, terrible historical mistake and injustice and to correct it. Because of course, Major League Baseball, like almost everybody, mm -hmm. want to admit their mistakes, right? Yes. So the tendency is to dig in and say, and find excuses rather than correct them and admit you were wrong. Yeah, no, I get it. And, and you know, um, like we've been talking about, the context of all this is really important because um, one, they were not playing in the Negro Leagues because they weren't good enough to play in Major League Baseball. They were forced to play there because of a, you know, a, a color barrier and 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 uh, everything that that associated with all the way down through the minor leagues as well. Then on top of that, <clears throat> they're uh, living in a in a society that's got, um, you know, persistent racism and in, in, in more so in other parts of the country than others. Jim Crow laws, things like that. They're dealing with those pressures on top of all this. These these guys deserve a hand, you know. They deserve a, some credit for right. performing the way they did under the conditions that they did. It, it's it's impressive to me, and and I think uh, more people, I think, as these stories get told, um, uh, that maybe we'll get a little bit better perspective on on things. Right, I agree, and 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 people, you know, people who are skeptical look at things, and they want to find holes like. Well, surely every Negro leaguer wasn't a major leaguer. Well, that's true. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If the black players got a fair chance, there are hundreds, probably several thousand white players who would never have played a day in the major leagues. And so we're not going to go through the record book and take out some guy who had, well, Sparky Anderson. Sparky Anderson, like, hit, what, 200 with no power in his one year in the majors, regular second major Phillies. Now, he's the kind of guy. Now, that was during the integrated era. It was in, uh, I think, 59. But he's the kind of guy that if their black players were playing and he were playing before World War II, he never would have been a major league player. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to go look for those guys. We're not going to take them out. We're going to say this, this is the way history was. They were major leaguers, even though they didn't have to compete against the black players. Mm -hmm. So the black players who weren't good enough to beat out the white players, they get thrown, they get thrown in the mix now, and they are major leaguers. And I'm fine with that. Mm 